You're listening to a podcast from digitaloilandgas.com. This podcast is entitled, What Does 2017 Hold for Digital Oil and Gas? It's customary at the dawn of a new year to make predictions you have no idea will come true. So, what are my predictions at the dawn of 2017 for the world of digital oil and gas? This is tricky because it requires some predictions for oil and gas as well. So, here goes. First on the oil price. My prediction is no material change. What possible effect does the price of oil have on digital? Well, actually, the price of oil is a big driver for the deployment of digital technologies into oil and gas. Frankly, high prices are a detriment to the use of digital. Higher commodity prices drive investments to grow production, whereas continued low prices drive investments in improving productivity where digital shines. Now, there's lots of enthusiasm that OPEC will finally prove all the naysayers wrong, coalesce as a coalition of the willing, hack away at production, and finally move the price of oil permanently north. This will not happen in 2017, but might in 2018 or 2019. There are several reasons for this. First, there's a huge and undocumented inventory of produced crude tucked away in floating storage, that is, loaded tankers moored at various ports and inshore storage facilities. The owners of this oil might want to wait out the market, but if prices move up even a little, some will want to capture their profits and sell down. More oil into the market will keep the price down. How much oil are we talking about? Well, if markets have been oversupplied by 30 months by a million barrels a day, OPEC thinks the market went long in June of 2014, and that oil has gone into storage, as much as 900 million barrels are out there looking for a buyer. Lots has disappeared into strategic stockpiles, but still, there's months and months of supply to absorb. And what about the inventory of drilled, but not completed wells in the U.S. shale sector? These wells won't move the market dramatically, but the owners of these facilities will be highly motivated to get their wells into production the instant the wells are in the money. And since the Saudis first floated production cuts in September, more than 150 drill rigs went back to work in the U.S., a sure sign that the U.S. oil engine is still primed and ready to go. Throw in a new fossil fuel-friendly, skeptical climate government and it's drill baby drill. And of course, will OPEC really honor its agreed production positions? I'm not buying it. The temptation to cheat on production targets is going to be overwhelming after all the pain they've been through. Therefore, low oil prices are good for the adoption of digital technology, so long live low oil prices. Next uh, prediction is where will be the biggest investment area in digital? Well, there's lots of digital trials underway in oil and gas, but they're going to be hampered by the generally poor quality of the underlying data. Until the data is cleaner, digital can't progress very far. It's starting to dawn on the industry that it's going to have to boost the level of investment and interest in assuring the ruthless cleanliness and reliability of its data. Of course, there's an argument that says digital analytics can overcome crappy data by applying heuristics, probability engines, and artificial intelligence to make very good educated guesses about what the data should be. I think this only takes us so far. It might be good enough for a desk engineer trying to figure out what's wrong with the process, but it will not be good enough for a site engineer tasked with fixing a reluctant valve and relying on a system that has guessed which way to turn it, even if the system is a good guesser. I'm already detecting a strong level of interest from big oil and gas concerns about leading practices in improving information quality. The areas of greatest interest will be in fixing the reliability and accuracy of existing asset data. Most of the most promising productivity gains that can be captured using digital tools rely on asset data, such as as as-builts, specs, and drawings, pointing at the construction industry and handover practices as ripe for attention. One of my colleagues thinks best-in-class data accuracy in a given oil facility is only 98.5%, or put another way, a pump with 100 parts has two mislabeled, or missing, or extra. But which two? Therefore, crappy data is bad for digital. 2017 is the start of the big data cleanup. Third prediction is where will be the biggest payoff. The biggest payoff for digital in 2017 will be in analytics. Despite my reservations about data quality, the fact is that oil and gas companies are already overwhelmed with data that they don't fully exploit. And even though that data may not be entirely accurate, it's still going to be good enough for the clever to find a payoff by applying analytic engines to the task. 
Analytic solutions, for the most part, will continue to be very specific to individual oil and gas concerns, owing to the complexity of their underlying technology choices and bespoke databases. Therefore, oil and gas companies will be most interested in analytics technologies that are sold as a tool set or a collection of widgets and not as developed solutions. 2017 will also see the first examples of cloud-based, crowd-fueled analytics using platforms like GE Predicts. Imagine uploading terabytes of downhole pump operating data from a SCADA system and applying an analytic engine to that data. You'd learn something. But what if that analytic engine was also learning insights from all of the other companies doing the same thing? You'd learn even more and faster. None of this is possible without cloud computing and storage combined with analytic engines. So analytics in oil and gas is like horseshoes and hand grenades. Close enough is good enough. Next prediction is on where the hottest careers will be. With all this interest in information management, data, taxonomies, and information standards, the hottest careers in 2017 will be for those individuals with training in this new world of data. Get used to hearing about the high demand for data scientists, information engineers, data wranglers, bit doctors, analytics engineers, information analysts, data structure designers, information standard specialists, and data conversion experts. These aren't roles that are on plain display in the standard oil and gas organization chart. Indeed, the industry will need to look outside its normal recruiting frame if it's going to find such experts. Good places to look are in manufacturing, aerospace, nuclear, and of course, Silicon Valley. I needn't observe that the fossil fuel industry isn't exactly a hot ticket among the youth coming through the education system today. Therefore, the industry should get into growing its own talent or prepare to source it from the market. Not a bad strategy, considering how much uncertainty there is in digital. So, best new job titles for 2017, Bit Doctor and Data Wrangler. Digital careers are going to boom in oil and gas. Finally, what is the biggest letdown? Well, one of my biggest frustrations with digital is that the industry seems largely composed of technology nerds with interesting ideas, but low acumen about how the oil and gas industry actually works. The Silicon Valley model, model for digital advancement, I would characterize as run around and break things, doesn't get you very far in oil and gas. Petroleum is dangerous. It's often produced in places you don't normally go on vacation. The climate is invariably harsh, remote, cold, wet, and even underwater. It takes an extraordinary level of investment to operate safely and reliably under all possible conditions. And the industry will embrace changes to its business model only when the technology is fully proven to run in their world. Sadly, many clever digital technologies that are killer in other settings will simply not stand up to the rigors of the industry. Can you imagine a tech wearing a virtual reality headset from Southern California on a pitching offshore platform at night in the North Sea? And even when the technology works, as with analytics or with some wearables or military heads-up displays, these technologies lack a viable business model in oil and gas. 2017 will not see any digital technologies taking off in a viral way in oil and gas as they can in other industries, because the use cases, business models, and adoption pathways are all underbaked. Add in the dampening effect of rising prices, and you get the picture. So digital oil and gas means business models, not toys. So my advice to the technology nerds, go away until you have a business. Question now is, what am I missing? There's lots of other hot areas in digital oil and gas that I haven't mentioned. ITOT convergence, drones and autonomous equipment, blockchain. So the real question is, what are you watching and why? You have been listening to a podcast from digitaloilgas.com. If you like what you've heard, please subscribe to future installments and visit us at digitaloilgas.com.